Zero fossil fuel and the moment everyone has been waiting for. Uh, I would like to show you, let's see here. This is the piece of linkage that interconnects the two arms. I think you can see that all right. And I have the timing of the stator control arm set to match the timing of the driven arm, or the driving arm I should say. And hopefully you can see this all right. I'm just going to get this thing rotating. Show you that the two arms are moving in unison at approximately the same deflection. So when I attach these two arms together, I should be able to achieve continuous unidirectional motion. I've drilled out the opening on this little piece of metal here with my uni bit, this time in a vise, no more injuries in case anyone's wondering. Here are all of the bandages on, <laughs> on my hand to cover up the cuts that I got this afternoon. Anyhow, I'm going to put this thing together. I have a uh, Teflon spacer that acts as the bearing surface for this little lever arm. The Teflon spacer is, I think, from a power transistor heat sink mounting kit. And it is made of Teflon, so it's quite quite slippery. Place. And here we go. And look at that. The friction in the system brings it to a halt. Now, before any of you say that I have failed, let me point out I have not failed. I have succeeded at finding a way that does not work. <laughs> True to Edison himself. However, I would like to point out something that I do believe may be causing the problem. And I'm going to show it to you right now. even though the timing of my movement of this stator control arm is in sync with the cam assembly. The motion is considerably different. I don't know if you can figure that one out but I'm going to tell you what the difference is. The motion that I am putting onto the stator is sinusoidal. The motion that I am getting from the control arm is fairly close to a square wave as a mechanical device can create. And as the magnet is approaching I am already in, in a downward motion as the magnet is crossing the, the field of the stator magnet beyond the zero crossing point and onto the next magnet. So instead of, I'll draw this out for you quickly, instead of 
pattern that looks like this, I will need a pattern that looks more like a roller coaster with a smoother, smoother slope and actuation of the stator magnet. So I will be taking the uh, the raceway assembly off of the bobbin and starting over with that. Fortunately I have plenty of 14 gauge copper wire around the shop with which to build it. And this arm flexes just enough for me to get the bearing away and out of the raceway so I can pop that off. And take that off. And I just put that back on place to play around with it, but this is gonna have to change. This is gonna instead of instead of emulating a square wave, we're gonna try to emulate a sine wave and see what happens. It may take a while. I'm uh, I'm a little bit tapped out. It's time for another cold one. So I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen so far. Don't lose hope. We are still working on this thing. And I know without a doubt that it will at some point begin to rotate. face it, it's not taking a lot for me to accelerate this five pound mass. You just have to get not only the timing, but the motion of the stator correct to make it keep doing that. Zero Fossil Fuel signing out for now. Hope you folks have a good weekend. I'll probably catch up with you next week. Take care.